Okay, guys. Um, I'm Pete from Scoopax, and uh, I, I want to talk about normal mapping. Uh, well, so what is normal mapping? Normal mapping is basically uh, referred also as bump mapping, but it is uh, different to to the bump mapping we used in the demo scene. Uh, for example, those 2D bump mapping stuff. Um, because there we, we just use some offset uh, for the texture loop depth. And uh, on when we're using normal mapping, we uh, do a uh, per pixel lightning. And instead of using the, the normal from the object, we, we just look it up from a map. Well, this is simple. Uh, just to remember how, how you would do a per pixel lightning calculation, a Fong model. You calculate the, the reflection, um, you calculate the specularity out of the reflection dot product with the viewing vector, and you calculate the, the diffuse factor by just using a dot product from the, uh, the, the light direction and the normal, and then you put that together multiplying with the color of the texture map with the uh, color of the uh, light, with the specularity color, and then at the end you add the ambient color. So this formula stays the same. The only thing different when using normal mapping is you don't take the normal from the object, you just take it and look it up from a map. Well, <coughs> it's not that easy. Because when normally you, you store the normals in object space, and if you store the normals in, op in the normal map in object space, um, you you can not really reuse the the map. So it highly depends on the model. And I mean the the, the big advantage is that. that the shader is very simple. You don't need to interpolate the, the normal and uh, the vertex buffer gets smaller. But the, the main disadvantage is that the normal map in object space has to fit to the model. And um, it's also not easy to, to do animations because think about it, if you have a hand and the, the normal points up and I move the hand, I want the normal to point in that direction, and it would still point up. So, I mean, you could um, pass the, the animation matrix into the pixel shader and do a matrix multiplication per pixel, but that's useless. So wha what people do is, instead of using object space, they use the normal map in tangent space, which is kind of relative. So what is tangent space? As I said, it's a relative to the, the object position. What you do is uh, you take the UV information and transform that UV information into 3D space. So um, you create a matrix out of three vectors. The one vector is the normal from the object. The second vector is called the tangent, which is basically the U direction in 3D space. And the binomial is the V direction in 3D space. Well, this is how, how you would calculate that. I, I don't want to go, okay, go into detail here. Um, it's, yeah, you can, can uh, download the, the slides and the, the video and, and you can also derive, derive it by hand if you want. So, how do you create the normal maps? Well, there are several methods. <laughs> one, one last ma method I've seen in the net was that a guy just did pictures from real objects. He did uh, from the front and three pictures, one with a light coming from the left, one from above and one from the top. And then he converted those pictures to grayscale and moved the one with the light from the left into the red channel, the one from above into the green channel, and the one from top in the blue.
blue channel. Well, I'm not sure if this is really practical, especially for big objects, houses or so. Uh, another method is, uh, there are people, they say, they just paint them. I'm not sure if this is really accurate. Um, nowadays there are also special programs like ZBrush where you can easily uh, paint and create really high detail objects and ZBrush has an option to directly export the normal map. But the most common technology wh what people are using is they create a high poly model and a low poly model in parallel and then just calculate the normal map uh, from the high poly model onto the low poly model. Uh, there are several tools doing this. For example, the ATI normal mapper. Uh, this is the one I'm using because they, you can download the source code and, and look how they do it and patch some things. There is the NVIDIA Melody and also the Crytex Polybump and I'm sure there are even more. So the the main topic of, of normal mapping, what I want, want to, to give you is, when I started with normal mapping, I, I thought it's just working out of the box. You can download normal map shader, render monkey, and it should work. But uh, the, the problems are in detail, because, yeah, well, the tang in space highly depends on the UV set definition. Then there is a question, uh, what happens if, if the normals are not smooth or, or the tangents? This will produce some, some seams in the normal map. Uh, then what happens on texture seams? And what about texture compression? Because we're using the normal map as a texture and if you want to dxt one compress them, we get some really bad artifacts. Okay, first the, the UV set definition. Well, you must not do any overlapping things because well, what should the, the, the tool do if you use the same parts? The, the tool uh, calculates, the, the looks up the, the normal into the high poly model and then it has to map it on, on, on the same things. This won't work. So you cannot do any overlapping, you cannot do any reusing in, in the UV set like you would do in the color maps. Uh, then it's really important to, to do the UV set as linear as possible to not get some distortion artifacts out of it. You won't see the, that uh, for color maps, but you will see that in uh, in using the normal map, and uh, yeah, don't don't uh, do any degeneration or small faces. For example, if you have a, a, a really really flat triangle and, and very high, then the the tangent calculation uh, has some precision problems or might have. So this this shows an example when I, I used hard normals. With hard normals, I mean just flat, what you would do uh, when you flat shaded it. Uh, so I have a normal per triangle, and uh, although in theory it should work, and it would work if, if I would use an older engine or a software engine, but with nowadays hardware, there are some problems because of sub-pixel precision and uh, filtering. You get those artifacts here, and it's, it's not practicable to, to use hard normals. So the conclusion is use a, a, a model with so soft normals everywhere and do all, all the, the hard edges in the normal map. Okay, well, and the same uh, you have to do with the tangents and the binomials. So the, the formula I showed you before was the calculation of the tangent and the binomial per face. And what you do is basically the same what you would do for the normals. You just add them together if they share a vertex and then normalize it. And yeah, this, this should give better results.
and uh, yeah. Another problem are texture scenes. Um, when when you it's it's not possible to to m most of the time it's not possible to map a 2D dimensional texture without any seam onto a, a closed uh, 3D object. So what are you going to do with that seam? And you will see that seam in the normal map. Uh, well, the, the, the easiest solution, or I it's kind of workaround, is uh, you just do it on the same position where there would be a seam in, in reality. For example, on a trouser, you have seams. And yeah, there it doesn't matter. A uh, second workaround could be that you make the seam in theory in between a triangle or a face, so that you ca can guarantee that the, uh, that the tangents and the binomials stay the same. Uh, and, and that will prevent artifacts from the interpolation. But the real solution is to smooth the tangents and the binomials, even if the UV coordinate is not the same. Well, um, this this has a, a big mm, uh, disadvantage. I mean, you have to to keep an eye on when when to move the uh, the the tangents because, for example, if if you want to reuse uh, some part, as I said, you should not. But in theory, you could. For example, if you have a completely mirrored face, you can just reuse the uh, the normal map from the left side to the right, but exactly uh, at the point where you mirror it, the, the tank ends and the binomials look at the opposite direction, and if you would smooth them out, uh, they would result in a zero. So the, the rule would be smooth the tank ends and the binomials when they share a vertex with the same position in 3D space, with the same normal, and don't care about the other attributes like UV or whatever you have, and uh, then check if they are not smoothing them out together. I do that with a simple dot product uh, and um, a good with a threshold value, and a good threshold value is about minus 0 0.8. So if, if it would have been minus one, it it would perfectly smooth them smooth zero them out. And uh, minus 0 0.8 is a good threshold. Well, that's good. But um, when I, I, I tested normal maps and I played around with it a bit, and I thought, yeah, it looks nice. But then I came, uh, it, it has, had, has had some strange artifacts. And uh, sometimes I wasn't sure it, it seemed like uh, the light was coming from the wrong direction sometimes. So I came out with a kind of list uh, to prove that I can work with normal mapping. And the first thing which really helped was I uh, wrote a small application which rendered the low poly model with a normal map next to the high poly model. And then I could move the light around in the camera and I saw that the lightning completely fits to the low poly model. Well, this was the first test. A second test would be to check if, if your uh, tangent and binomial calculation is correct. I did that by creating a normal map from a flat plane and uh, just put some, some bumps into the high detail map and then create a simple cube and put the normal map from the plane on each side of the cube so I have all the rotations and I, I see the, that the, the calculation in, in the tangent space works correctly and as I use the, 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 same, uh, the same test application I had to also make a, a high poly uh, cube by just copying the, the high poly um, bump 
a plane six times and make a cube. Well, <coughs> and a third example, a uh, third proof uh, was to, to flatten out the geometry. This makes no sense in real life, but it shows how accurate your normal mapping routine is. So what we did here was we used a kind of high poly model uh, with some bumps. Then we created a normal map with a flat plane so that the normal map just flattens out the bumps from the plane with the bumps. And uh, well, when, when you render it, although you have the bumps in the geometry, the normal map should flatten it out completely. And one result was that with uh, with set set brush normal maps, this is not possible. So you don't have the accuracy with set brush. And with the ATI tool, this works perfectly. And yeah, last but not least, um, you ha you can get some problems if you mirror the geometry. If you mirror geometry in, for example, Maya or Max you have the problem that the normal points into the wrong direction. So you have to adjust the normal and this could also mess up the, the tangent space calculation. So the, the last thing I, I want to talk about is uh, compression because nowadays it is very important to do compression because if you do compression the texture gets smaller, you have more cache hits and this really pays off. But, as I said, DXT1 compression is not a good idea for normal maps because uh, the, the way a DXT1 compression works, you get some artifacts, but you don't really see them in color maps or they are not that big, but you will see really strange artifacts in the when using this texture as a normal map. So ATI invented uh, their own compression and what they do basically is they just store two components um, and uh, the third component can be recalculated in the shader because you know the normals should be smooth, uh, should be normalized to one. So you can just uh, multiply and add them together and uh, do a square root to get to the third component. And uh, yeah, the, the big disadvantage is that, that this only works on the latest generation of hardware. And um, you could use some similar stuff by using DXT5 compression and um, just ignore the, the blue and the alpha channel so that, that they don't mess up the compression and you know, just take the red and the green component and calculate the third component as you would do with the ATI compression method. Yeah, at the end uh, I want to just uh, show some, some things I have from the web. This is the from ATI where you see on the left without normal mapping and on the right with. So the whole thing here is just in the normal map. And there is a second example which shows it, I think, exactly at the point. This is the, the high poly model and here is the low poly model. The high poly model has about 14,000 vertices and the low poly has 144. And of course you see the, the hard edges here because of the low vertices. But if you look in the model, it really looks the same as the high poly model. Okay, any questions? Has anyone, uh, then I have a question. Has anyone yet used normal mapping? Okay. <laughs> Is anyone going to use it? Okay, fine. Well, okay, then thank you very much. Give him a hand.